from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Winner of the 2017 Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Best Education Show, Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 78. The idea that studying animals can improve your English may seem puzzling, but research and my own experience as a teacher encourages me to continue using a content-based approach to which I referred in the introduction. I'll tell you more about that later in this episode. Now, prior to that, I want to share with you a place that has plenty of wild animals, and that place is the state of Alaska. This issue of national wildlife celebrates 150 years of conservation in Alaska. It's been that long since the United States bought Alaska from Russia. The purchase was denounced as Seward's Icebox after the Secretary of State who worked out the purchase. It was the purchase of the age, every single bit as much a bargain as the Louisiana purchase. The natural riches of Alaska are staggering, not to mention the mineral riches that has brought economic wealth to many native populations. This book from National Geographic goes into deeper detail about Alaska's wildlife, including some breathtaking wildlife photography. It's entitled Alaska's Wildlife Treasures. Let's meet some of the wildlife I encountered in Alaska. From Hawaii, attracted by the tiny krill that provides abundant food. This pod is probably in search of food, probably krill. Now sometimes all you'll see is the tail called the flukes. But humpback whales also seem to enjoy slapping their petrol fins on the water's surface. Humpbacks have the longest petrol fins of all the baleen whales. This is a behavior that's often seen, but not well understood. They could be trying to knock off barnacles, or perhaps signaling to other whales. Then again, they may just be doing it because they like it. Humpback whales can be seen doing the same thing with their tails. Listen carefully, and you'll hear the slapping along with the hum of the boat's motor. Oh my gosh, there's a half of the whale. The abundant life that attracts the whales to Alaska's waters is fed by the melting of Alaska's snowpack and recently by the melting of some of Alaska's 100,000 glaciers. Climate change is evident here 
as glacial melting and calving becomes more common. Those huge chunks of ice float slowly away from the glacier, becoming icebergs. They come in different sizes, with 10% visible above the water and the rest below the surface. So what does all this ice have to do with Alaska's wildlife? Well, it has a great deal to do with harbor seals. An important behavior adaptation is using these icebergs to give birth to seal pups, a place that's safe from most predators. The mothers nurse their pups on their very rich milk, supporting their offspring until they unceremoniously push them into the water to fend for themselves. Stellar sea lions also spend much of their time in Alaska's waters. These are hauled out on the rocky shore. Looking up is another way to enjoy Alaska's wildlife. Bald eagles are abundant here. Doll sheep are also seen in high places, protected in Denali National Park. So are these mountain caribou, seen here in summer, keeping cool in the last remnant of snow. The snow also helps them avoid clouds of biting flies and mosquitoes. These are distinct from the porcupine herd of caribou. These are forest caribou. Red foxes are also seen in Denali. They are newcomers to these latitudes and bad news for Arctic foxes. There's nothing new about Alaska brown bears called grizzlies in the lower 48. There's also nothing new about their infamous appetites. This one claws around for a meal as it awaits the salmon run, the spawning migration that's still strong in some Alaskan streams. The dead salmon in the foreground means the run may have already been over for these black bears. Bears are well adapted for the long, cold winters in Alaska. There's still lots of wildlife up here. President Jimmy Carter set aside vast wild spaces for national parks, which is good news for wild animals that live here.